What's up, YouTube? Leo Shang with Cast King here. Welcome to episode one of my new series here on the Cast King channel. I decided to title it Know Your Species. And here on the series, I, Leo Shang, host of the Extreme Fully Fishing channel, am going to teach you guys how to properly identify and target different species of fish out there. In this particular episode, episode one, we're going to talk about a fish that you folks are probably well familiar with. We're going to talk about the mighty bluegill, the Lepomis macrocidus. So by the end of this video, I hope that you enjoy all the information, absorb it, so that you become an expert when it comes to identifying the species and targeting it in your local watersheds. The first thing that we're going to talk about in this video is actually taxonomy. And the bluegill just so happens to be a sunfish. Therefore, it is part of the sunfish family. The name of the sunfish family is Centrarchidae. And it just so happens that this family breaks down into two subfamilies, Centrarchinae and Lepominae. At this point, if you guys are professionals when it comes to binomial names and you know that the bluegill is called the Lepomis macrocidus, you already know that it is going to fall within the category, right, the subfamily Lepominae. But I would like to point out, even though we are not talking about the Centrarchinae subfamily today, keep it in mind, okay, because we have two very interesting genera in that branch. Uh, respectively, the black crappie and white crappie are there, so members of the Pomoxis genus, and also our good old rock bass, the Amblopletes rupestris, right? The Amblopletes genus is also there. But going back to the main topic, right? You got a Lepominae subfamily that breaks down once again in two genera. One is the Micropterus and the other one is the Lepomis. Now, you may look at me and be like, Micropterus, I probably read that somewhere one day. And you probably did, right? Because the Micropterus is actually the genus that covers all the bass species out there, right? Largemouth bass, Micropterus salmoides, uh, smallmouth bass, Micropterus dolomiel, spotted bass, Micropterus punctulatus, it is all there, right? And our mighty bluegill, the Lepomis macrocidus, falls, of course, in the Lepomis genus, together with the red breast sunfish, green sunfish, uh, you talk about it, right? Dollar sunfish, warm mouth, etc. Uh, and you may be asking me, Leo, what do I get out of this? What do I get out of taxonomy, right? Well, now, for example, you guys know and understand that when someone says, oh, I caught a bunch of sunfish today, right? That person may be referring to any of the 37 different species of fish in the Centrarchidae family. Similarly, if someone comes to you and says, oh, I caught a bunch of bram today, which is actually a terminology that a lot of southerners like to use, they are talking specifically about the species in the Lepomis genus. So as you guys can see, knowing taxonomy is definitely very, very important. And now that you know all of this, you can make, you know, you can kind of do the lines, right? And make relationships between a species and other species out there. All right, now that you guys are professionals when it comes to the bluegill taxonomy, it is finally time for some bluegill identification. And for this portion of the video, I got a little guest here with me directly from Newton Lake, Collinswood, New Jersey. Check this out, huh? We got here Mike the Bluegill. He barely fits in our photo tank, by the way. Okay, now that we can take a closer look at our sample here, Mike the bluegill, we can see some of the key characteristics in the bluegill species. Number one, and most important, is the blue on its operculum. Check that out. That is what gives this fish its name, right? The bluegill. The second one is definitely the opercular flap, which is this little black dot right over here. Bluegill have only black on its opercular flap. No white, no red, no purple, just black. 
And finally, I don't know how well you guys can see it, there is a black dot right here at the end of the soft dorsal fin. That is, not, that is another characteristic, particularly of the bluegill. They also have vertical bars, vertical stripes, but not every bluegill out there has vertical stripes like this that are so apparent. Now, I would like to point out that not all bluegill around the country look like the bluegill that I just portrayed to you guys here in this video, right? When it comes to identifying different species of fish out there, you always got to take different factors into consideration. For example, did you know that the bluegill actually has different subspecies? One of the most known subspecies is the one that I portrayed in this video, the northern bluegill, which is the Lepomis macrocytus macrocytus, but another one that is very well known is actually the copper nose bluegill, the Lepomis macrocytus mystacalis. And if you look at a photo of it, you will see that it is quite different. It can be darker, it has the copper color on its operculum, and sometimes it has shades of white on its tail, right? Another factor that you have to take in consideration is gender. Male and female bluegills have different colors and sometimes different patterns. So when it comes to identification, right, you can never just rely on one sample. But as far as you have the key, the key characteristics dialed in, you should be able to identify your bluegill. Now, when it comes to this specific species of fish, there are three things that make the bluegill really easy for anglers to catch out there. Number one is that for most part of the year, they stay in the shallows, close to cover and close to structure. Number two, they like to travel in schools. So once you go to your local watershed, your local body of water, and you catch one of them, chances are you are going to catch more of them, you know? And number three, and most importantly, they are opportunistic feeders. It doesn't matter what time of the year, where they are, what time of the day, what they're doing, chances are they will eat, okay? So as bad as it sounds, when you put something, whatever it is in front of their faces, out of curiosity or out of hunger, they will usually go there and at least take a look, take a nibble out of it. Now, don't take me wrong, folks. The smaller ones of the species, they may be really easy to catch, maybe because of their unwariness or greediness when it comes to food, but the bigger ones, they are quite challenging to land, okay? They are very, very selective when it comes to their eating behavior, very, very smart, which is why I always tell people, if you are going to catch big bluegill, okay, just go light on your tackle. I would recommend an ultra light to a medium light setup maximum, okay? In this case, I really, really recommend the Cast King Peri G2. I always carry it medium light with me, right? With a Cast King uh, Sharky 2, 1500 model. Although you may go smaller with a 1000 model. And when it comes to technique, I really like to recommend two techniques for pan fishermen out there. The first one is free falling and it consists only of the hook and bait. No weight. All you need to do is cast it out there as far as you can, right? And let the bait sink as naturally as possible. Which is why usually I recommend the casking floral coach four to six pounds test line or even the casking copolymer, okay? It just sinks nicely. The other technique that I would recommend is suspended jigging, which consists of a small jig head, which with your bait or your of preference under a float. Just cast out there. You can use a weighted float for extra castability and just jig it, right? And usually the panfish, the bluegill in particular, will hit it. This is it for this video, folks. I hope you guys enjoyed this video very much, and I hope you go out there and catch a lot of bluegill in the future. Stay tuned for future videos here on the Cascade channel. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you like what you see, okay? I will be back soon enough with other species for you guys. All right, tight lines. I will see you guys next time.